We've been on the move for the past four months. We left the Whit Sundays behind to chase the northern waters of Australia. The trade winds kicked us into gear, propelling us through the intricate maze of the Great Barrier Reef and carrying us to the destinations of our wildest dreams. We ticked off one whole state in our Australian circumnavigation as we peeled away from Queensland to cross the vast sea to the Northern Territory. This new coast has forced us to contend with strong tidal flows and elusive crocodiles and cover hundreds of miles of absolute void. Now, tight on diesel and food. We are the closest to civilization we've been in a long time. We're so close, but yet right now feels like the furthest we've been from civilization. We have a couple of hurdles to overcome on our last leg into Australia's northernmost city. There's two ginormous big battleships out in front of us. I knew that the karma was roughly in the area. You just hope that they're nice, guys. They probably really are. Welcome to the last leg of the season. Catch dream fish. team! Yeah. We yeah. are the dream team! Last week, we left you here. Not sure where we were sailing to, but just in the general direction towards Darwin. Slowly sailing into the night. Another night at sea. We're getting pretty used to these. It's about midnight now, and something's not feeling right. All right, so we've decided to abort mission. The general idea was to catch the change of tide at 1 a.m. to begin our journey down Dundas Strait. So we've decided to abort mission and heading to Alcaro Bay. We'll explain later. We'll explain later for now. We're just trying to approach the bay and drop anchor. It's the last anchorage for about 60 nautical miles, so we want to make sure everything is okay before we put ourselves in a strong tidal stream without any wind. This is in Darwin. We um, pulled over last night. I was asleep, Simon woke me up and he was feeling a little bit uneasy about this shuddering feeling through the boat. We were motoring. There was no wind, just about to get into like this tidal stream and we started freaking out about the engine. So we made the quick decision to pull into Alcaro Bay. We're gonna do some checks this morning for the engine. Check that there's nothing on the prop. Yeah, we managed to get some sleep. We pulled in at around 12 o'clock. Anchored and everything probably by one o'clock. Yeah, definitely, definitely tired. So yes, what I'm trying to say in my morning haze is the boat felt like it was shuddering and we have a feeling there could be something on our prop. And we have one theory about what it could be. Perhaps it could have been seaweed on the prop because it felt like the boat was shuddering a bit and there's big thick seaweed around this area. We noticed heaps of it and big clumps of it floating past last night. So I'm just gonna dip the GoPro on the boat hook over the side of the boat, see if I can have a look at the prop and put our minds to ease or if there's something on there. Yeah, don't want to jump in the water because obviously we are well and truly in croc country and then it's, what if we do find something, I don't know what the next step is. Maybe a very, very, very quick dive or maybe we motor out to see a little bit and then dive, but hopefully we don't find anything and yeah. GoPros, eh? Handy little pieces of equipment, I'll tell you that. Right, see what we got. Let's have a look. Sort of having a look at this footage and there's definitely growth on the anode, but it does look like there's a bit of seaweed wrapped just behind the prop. These are the clumpy bits of seaweed we've been going past, which looks like we have run over through the night. We assume we spun most of it off when we reversed on the anchor last night. We even saw some seaweedy debris float to the surface. In any other area that wasn't croc country, we would dive on it to get a better glimpse, but at least we can see from these shots here that there isn't anything major caught. This is a huge relief given the amount of ghost nets we've seen on these top end beaches. It's a nerve wracking seeing how much nets in the water. There's nothing major on there. There's not like a big thing of rope that I can see. There is a little bit of seaweed there. Not enough in my opinion that can warrant me jumping in this water. That's my official diagnosis. For now, we're just gonna let that sit in the mines and 
going to empty out this locker and do a dipstick check on the fuel again. See what we burnt yesterday, see how much we've sort of got left. Although we're a sailboat, we've been getting nervous about our fuel levels as there's been a serious lack of wind. We've been sailing whenever we can, but we're going to need the engine for this last leg into Darwin if there's no wind. So it's so bush mechanics here, but if we have probably just under half a tank, I mean half a tank should be 50 litres and then that at two and a half litres an hour, which I've sort of pulled out my ass as well, then we should have 20 hours of motoring at 50 litres and it's 19 and a half hours. <laughs> So we haven't left ourselves with too much wriggle room, but as a wise man once said, How long is a tank of diesel? Well, that is exactly the distance from one end to the other. We concluded our engine run over with an oil check and changed the inline fuel filter because why not? There's nothing like waking up covered in diesel on a Friday in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Literally, we're the closest to civilization we've been in about 1500 nautical miles. We're so close, but yet, right now, feels like the furthest we've been from civilization. Literally, it would have been easier to go to Indo than it would be to get down into Darwin. Far out. <laughs> Darwin is seeming so far away because, well, it's still about another 19 hours away, which if you were on a plane, you could travel from New York to Sydney covering about 10,000 miles in this time. For us, we'll cover about 90. From here, Alcaro Bay to Darwin. Anywho, nothing is achieved by just talking about it. So we've concluded it's not worth jumping in the water for the seaweed on the prop because, you know, crocs. The fuel is looking low, but we should just make it if we have to motor the whole 19 hours. Oil is good and the engine sounds good. So let's get into it. I'm feeling frazzled, dazzled and confused. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. All right, one last leg, let's hope we make it. Although there is no wind, we still like to get the mainsail up because you never know when it will creep in. We like to be ready. I made the smoothie. Ooh. Ah. Also, this last leg into Darwin is all about the timing if we want it to be a smooth operation. So we've timed our departure to align with the turn of tide here at the beginning of Dundas Strait. There are three main tidal movements over our 19 hour sail, but given the vast distance, the tidal changes are somewhat staggered and we should be able to catch them like a wave the whole way through to Darwin. However, say we don't maintain our speed, the tides could fall out of our favour and stop us in our tracks. The most crucial obstacle is the Vernon Islands, where a combination of islands and reef congests the narrowest point between mainland and the Tiwi Islands. We will pass through here at night, so it's vital to have the tide with us, or we will almost certainly be going backwards in the raging water. So there's two ginormous big battleships out in front of us. We're just really hoping they don't tell us to move because they're playing war games or something. We're literally going straight into the middle of whatever they're doing, but they haven't told us to f off yet, which I'm honestly very surprised about. We're feeling very reluctant to stray from our course. Even if they called us on the radio, we might just politely excuse ourselves. Like, sorry fellas, not happening. <laughs> Run low on diesel unless you've got any spare. We're pushing on through. <laughs> like. Can't put any more miles on our course, fellas. Gotta keep the straight line theory going. But what I was thinking is, imagine you see this big splash, like you get the warning shot. Because it looks like. Yeah. Well, you fine. just see their cannons start moving. Anyway. But it turns out we were being watched just as carefully by one of our patrons who was at the helm of this beast here. I knew that Nakama was roughly in the area from their Patreon page, which, by the way, if you're not on it, get on it. I was driving HMAS Hobart, sailing in company with three other warships from Singapore, Malaysia and India uh, as part of Exercise Kaku. And sure enough, just as the four warships opened up from the formation pilotage, Nakama passes down our starboard beam. Okay, so they weren't going to shoot us down. You just hope that they're nice guys. They probably really are really nice guys. Oh my god, babe. Get your towel on, Matt. <laughs> I wonder if he's still there. Yep, he's still there. Oh! <laughs> yes, we got a fish on. 
Yeah, he uses it back there. I've seen him come up. Oh! What is that? Tuna or Tuna apple? Tuna looks like. <laughs> Definitely yeah. a tuna. He's tired. He's had a few big runs. He's done. Oh. Ready? Watch your feet? Yeah. Look at that. Oh my god! He's a oh, he is so big! Far out. We have been lucky on the tuna front. We have, apart from like two weeks ago, never caught a good eating tuna. And literally, we've caught three immaculate tuna in the last three fish that we've caught. I don't know if that made sense. This guy is the biggest so far. It's good that we're coming into somewhere because we're not gonna be out on the water for a while, so he'll be much appreciated for a long time. <laughs> nice one, baby. Nice up. Finally starting to catch some decent fish. Oh no, look at that one! Drop it. Nice for it though. It's brilliant, works out good for both of us because Soph hates catching fish, loves eating them. But hates. <laughs> Soph hates catching fish. Oh, well, I like eating them too. <laughs> but Soph hates catching fish and I hate filleting. So, ah, oh, that's every fisherman's dream, just catch dream fish. Dream team! Yeah. We yeah. are the dream team! <laughs> yeah, and we both think we're winning. It's, like, it's been brilliant. <laughs> we're actually sailing as well. We got stupid amounts of tuna in the fridge. We were just down to our last little piece. It wasn't going to be like a full meal tonight. That's the good thing about up here as well. It may be hot, but you're like, F we're running low on tuna. Oh well, chuck the lure in. And now we got the biggest tuna we ever caught. But yeah, I don't know. There's a little bit of wind, so we're taking advantage of it just to give the engine a break, keep those little fuel reserves reserving and um, pottering along. We're not doing the speeds exactly that would be, I mean, we're doing four and a half knots. It's not the end of the world. burning off peaks up here so the sky is really smoky and hazy which means that you get these epic sunsets you get such a clear circle of a sunset because there's so much smoke that there's not really any rays that can escape it if that makes sense but so stunning I've been lost for so long. we can't believe how far we've come since we left Airlie Beach all those months ago I'm gonna miss it. Not just in miles, but in ourselves as sailors, uni students, fisher people, and DIY handymen. We don't have any measuring cups on board. It hasn't all been easy. This is not nice. But together, we have overcome broken steering, broken sails, a broken dunny. Oh, come on, he's done it! And a hole in our boat. We've got heaps of fresh food at the moment, so thought we could spare half a carrot, so I've snapped the top end of a carrot off and I could get that into where the pipe goes. And then I've tightened a hose clamp around the carrot. At times, we've battled wild winds and wild seas and been mocked by no wind at all. It's so silent. It's out here we feel most ourselves and we just feel like we could take on the world with our 10 meter super yacht. 10.2 knots on Nakama, 1980 something, 34 feet worth of sick radness. But if we thought this coastline was remote, let's wait and see what the Western Australian coast has in store for us. You and your fishiness. I think this is a masterpiece. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna make sushi, but it was way too much effort, so sort of just like threw it all in a bowl. So the wind, as we we're eating dinner, completely decided to change and turn literally on our nose and give us like 17 knots on the nose. So following dinner, with a few lurking squalls and strange wind about, we've held off on beginning our watches. Soap's those two little evil eyes there, <laughs> that's the head. Soap is the head torch, but she just looks like a robot crocodile in the background. <laughs> Normally one of us would be asleep by now, but navigating all these banks and squalls, we both are. <laughs> There's a little robot. <laughs> um, 
we're both up. It's kind of nice. I like it when we do night things together. Do -do! <laughs> All right, see you in a sec. It's hard to stick to our watches as we're approaching the Vernon Islands. This is the moment of truth to see if we've arrived at the right time. A little update. We're doing now 7.9 knots, uh, just heading through the North Channel that goes above the Vernon Islands. Eight knots now. How good is that? We definitely have the current with us and I would not want to be going against this. No, I would not. We got about 35 miles to go. So yeah, we are getting there. These are pretty impressive speeds considering the wind is still blowing roughly 20 knots on the nose and Nakama usually motors at a top speed of five knots without the wind on her nose. The final less than 10 liters, I guess. On the home stretch, and after a few hours of motoring, we dribbled some remaining fuel left in a jerry into the tank, and we slowly putted our way down into Fanny Bay. Good morning. We have dropped anchor in Darwin. We came in at about six o'clock this morning, and we just went straight to sleep. And we've just been woken up by, literally we're in the start we were in the middle of the start of the race. <laughs> Little did we know when we dropped anchor that we were dropping anchor on the start line of the Darwin to Indonesia rally. We had enthusiastic support boats knocking on the hull, wondering why we didn't have the anchor up yet. I think we might just need a day's rest before we head back out there. Well, getting into Darwin, I think means Slim and Soph have earned a beer. It's been a little bit since we've had a beer and boy, are we keen to have one that comes out of a tap and into a glass and in our mouths. I'm even putting my, <laughs> even putting my stepping out hat on, my new lid. We haven't been off the boat in six days. I don't even know if I have leg muscles anymore. It is a bad day to be a beer. I'm like, look at me smiling. It's just so much better from the top. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It literally tastes like how it looks. <laughs> that good. It looks like golden nectar of life with bubbles <laughs> and froth on top just to make it that much more spectacular. I'm, I'm tired, so that's adding to it, but I'm legit yeah, I'm speechless. Yeah, I'm, I'm delirious. Why well, so seriously delirious? I need to deliriously shave my beard. <laughs> Well guys, you know that patron of ours on that warship? Well, he's just dropped anchor too, so we're going to put the camera down and meet him here for a beer. So we will catch you all next week. We try something we've never done before on Nakama <laughs> and check out a few things Darwin's got to offer. As always, a massive thank you to our patrons. You're the reason these videos are possible, so cheers to you guys. If you're enjoying the journey and you haven't already, subscribing really helps. Cheers for tuning in. We'll see you when we're looking at you.